Okay, we're going to talk about the zero force member in a truss. The zero force member is this guy right here. Okay, and you may ask, well, why is that a zero force member? Well, this, what I'm going to talk about here assumes that we have 90 degree angles, so that's a 90 degree angle there. And we're going to look specifically at this joint C right here. So I'm looking at joint C right here. So let's do a little free body diagram of joint C and see what it looks like. So we'll take the joint and we're going to take the member going CD off to the right and CB off to the left and CA going up. Okay. And if we assume that all of our unknowns are in tension, let's draw little arrows on here. Okay. So we have one up and one to the left and one to the right. And again, this is a 90 degree angle. By looking at this, when there's no load applied at joint C, just looking at our equilibrium equations, some of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero of being positive, and we'll call the one on the left TL, and the one on the right TR, and we'll call the top one TV for vertical. The only force we have in the vertical direction is TV. Therefore, TV has to equal zero. So whenever you see a element where you have only one perpendicular line coming in, so we only have one member coming in in the vertical sense, it has to be a zero force member. And so this particular member here is zero force. Now it must be noted that the zero force member it only happens when there's no load applied to that joint. Let's look at this example down here where it's the same geometry, same configuration, and as we said before, in an absence of a, of a load applied here, TV must be equal to zero based on this equilibrium equation. However, let's say for instance there was a vertical force applied to the joint, or a force applied with a vertical component. If we look at our, some of our, of our forces in the vertical direction now, some of the forces in the y direction must equal zero, up being positive. You'll see that we have a P going down, and we have our TV going up. And so we can deduct from this that TV must equal P in this case. So to conclude, whenever we have a single member coming into a joint and there's no load ap applied to the joint, as we can see in our truss up here at joint C, that vertical member is a zero force member. However, if there was a force applied to P, a different type, a different loading condition, then it's not a zero force member, but that force in that member would be the same as the load.